the, the anti-war faction and replace it with the pro-liberty, pro-defense of individual rights faction? Well, uh, I don't see anything to this is there. <laughs> <laughs> Foreign policy is an area where uh, people who share a libertarian vision of uh, the proper relation between citizen and government um, or individual and, and, and state. Uh, and domestically, we probably agree on everything because, uh, or almost everything, because you can apply principles within a political framework. You can say, here's the proper framework, and individual rights under government, uh, rule of law, and that then dictates essentially down a huge swaths of domestic policy. But when in foreign policy, so much is a matter of, you can, you can embrace the principle that we should, the, the government should protect the, if the people of the country against foreign aggression and the threat of it. Then, yeah, I, I'm fully behind that principle. Because I think it's inherent in the whole idea of rights and, and you know, the idea of what a government is for. But, to apply it, you have to have a way of measuring threat, degree of threat. How do you determine what is and is not an objective threat? And you have to um, make your response proportionate to, the, or appropriate to the threat. That is, it, there, there are um, doubtless people in um, some parts of the world that in a stretch of the imagination you could imagine doing serious harm to us. Before 9-11 before I would have said that some, you know, I would have said that of the uh, Al-Qaeda terrorists. Learned better now. But you, you could stretch it to the point where here's, here's someone who could be a threat and we're going to nuke it. Well, uh, to me that's, that's, that's bad strategy. Uh, You have you have you have two problems that in foreign policy that have to be calibrated. One is assessing threat and the degree of threat, and the other is assessing the possible means from diplomacy to sanctions to war to uh, total war. And how you do that is something that you have. To, I think you the required skills are not really philosophical, but strategic thinking, military doctrine. Uh, knowledge of history, political um, political science. There are many, many ramifications of any action that a government takes. The problem is, in foreign policy, we're dealing with agents, actors, who are in a state of nature vis-a-vis -vis each other. There is no overarching government, so we are all in Locke's state of nature. And it's all strategy. So. I, I, I know that other some some objectivists are are <clears throat> uh, have have spoken about um, total war against Iran, for example. And um, I, I can't say that I'm I'm for it. I can't say I'm totally against it. Or I think that it's clearly false. But I think it's un un unsupported by the arguments that I've heard and by what I know of the the. Uh, the background and knowledge base of the people uh, who are making those claims. I, I don't see, I don't see um, a whole body of war college level knowledge behind it. So I, would, I think going to war is, is a horrible, horrible decision to have to make. You have to make it sometimes, uh, and not only when you're actually, you know, not only when they attack Galveston Island, um, when the boats are swarming <laughs> over the sand, but you have to attack sometimes to prevent a threat or act in the face of the threat. Um, but, um, hopefully we, I would certainly hope we have done what, what we either had to or didn't have to, but are, are now essentially done with. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. So, I, okay, that's it. That's a, that is a down note to end on, isn't it? <laughs> um, maybe that could be a topic for the next meeting. Uh, okay, I think.
Last one? Uh, no, no, we're done. <laughs> I don't care. I, yeah, let's go with one more. Why not? Uh, one more. Uh, 